In the last video, we considered the origin of multiplicity or splitting patterns for situations where we were dealing with a proton signal that had a certain number of vicinal hydrogens that were equivalent, meaning that they were in exactly the same environment, that they were symmetrical and interchangeable. So one example of that could be this situation on the left, where if we are measuring the chemical shift of this particular proton and multiplicity, we could apply the n plus 1 rule, keeping in mind that there are two vicinal hydrogens here that are equivalent, and applying that number of 2 as n plus 1, 2 plus 1 equals 3, we would expect this signal in red to show up as a triplet in our NMR spectrum. But the key assumption of this is that those two vicinal hydrogens are in exactly the same environment. They're totally symmetrical, totally interchangeable, and that will generally only be the case if these are the only hydrogens that are vicinal to the one in red, that there aren't any vicinal hydrogens up here or down here in those R groups. And also it assumes that these two hydrogens are indeed in exactly the same environment. If rather than this being a chain of freely rotatable bonds, if instead we had a carbon-carbon double bond here somewhere, or we had a ring, that would essentially lock these hydrogens into chemical environments that cause them to be different from one another. Hence, they would no longer be symmetrical. They would no longer be interchangeable with one another. And so the N plus one rule would not completely apply in those situations where we are looking at vicinal hydrogens that are in different environments. When we have vicinal hydrogens that are in different environments, what we are going to see is more complex splitting patterns. And that's what we're going to get into in this video. So one example of that would be this scenario on the right hand side of the slide here, where if we are looking at the chemical shift and multiplicity of this hydrogen in red here, the multiplicity is going to be impacted by the vicinal hydrogen over here on the left in blue, and also the vicinal hydrogen on the right in blue. And we are going to assume that these R groups are all different, they are non-identical, placing therefore the hydrogen here in blue versus the other one in very different chemical environments and hence experiencing different magnetic fields. And as a result, those blue hydrogens are not going to cause a predictable N plus one application of the splitting pattern because of the fact that the chemical environments of these two hydrogen atoms are different. They are not symmetrical. They are not interchangeable hydrogens. And so we're going to get a more complex splitting pattern occurring here. So how can we predict what's going to happen in that splitting pattern? So we can evaluate what's going to happen here by thinking about the impact of each of those two vicinal hydrogens that are in very different environments. So let's draw a schematic of this, which we could refer to as a splitting tree. So in our splitting tree, we're going to start by saying that hypothetically, the chemical shift of the proton in red, we'll say is at a chemical shift of 5.5 ppms. So this is our proton that we are actually measuring the chemical shift of. That's the proton in red here in the middle of our diagram. And now, due to the fact that it has these vicinal hydrogens, we don't expect that proton to show up as a single signal because we expect that it's going to be influenced by the magnetic spin states of these two vicinal hydrogens. And so when we think about those different spin states and the impact of those creating a splitting pattern, what's going to happen is that this proton signal in red will be split differently by the two protons that are in different environments because they are going to split into um, a splitting pattern with different frequencies. And so let's say that the signal on the left, the proton on the left, is going to split the signal of the proton in red with a frequency of let's say 20 hertz. On the other hand, the one on the right, the difference in frequency between the two signals that it would split our red one into, let's say that has 
a frequency for splitting of 10 hertz. So what's going to happen is that the red proton signal, which is at 5.5 ppm along the x-axis, is going to be split by both the proton that is vicinal to its left there, and that splitting frequency would be 20 hertz, so that's a pretty widely spaced set of two signals. And on the other hand, looking at the signal over here, it will be split by a frequency of 10 hertz. And so what happens is that the signal of the proton of interest, that red signal, is initially split into a doublet by the hydrogen that is at the left here, the vicinal hydrogen at the left. And the distance between those two signals of that doublet would be 20 hertz because we said that that is what the splitting, splitting frequency is for this vicinal proton on the left. On the other hand, the one on the right splits with a frequency of 10 hertz. So what happens is once that signal is split by the higher frequency, giving this doublet, it is additionally split again by this lower frequency signal at 10 hertz. And so that's going to split this set of two signals that we have here and here separated by 20 hertz into an additional two signals here and here or here and here. And those are going to be spaced from one another by 10 hertz, which was the frequency that we were observing for the second splitting pattern there, the second splitting frequency. And so ultimately what you end up with in the NMR spectrum is you end up with a total of four signals, one, two, three, and four. And we refer to this as a so-called doublet of doublets. It is illustrating to us that the proton in red is being split by two different protons that are non-equivalent. And that happens in sequence in this splitting tree where the proton in red is split into these two signals of 20 hertz. This part at the top here would be as if the proton in red just had one vicinal hydrogen being split into this doublet here. But due to the fact that there's this other vicinal hydrogen that is non-equivalent to the first blue vicinal hydrogen, that initial 20 hertz doublet single gets split into doublets again because each of those two signals are getting split by the second proton that is coupled here. So to here and to here, giving us the so-called doublet of doublets. And that's a common phenomenon we'll see when we have multiple vicinal hydrogens in different environments. If we have a situation where we have vicinal environments in several different environments, this could be up to um, six or more different environments, depending upon how many vicinal hydrogens there are in their different environments. Um, we could possibly have very complex so-called multiplets where we just have a cluster of peaks that are all kind of running together, indicating that we have a very, very complex splitting pattern because we have taken a variety of different splitting frequencies and we've merged them all together into a tree that becomes something that is not so nice and clean like this tree, but instead a tree that has a bunch of different branches representing a bunch of different splitting frequencies, creating a really complex cluster of signal. So this is going to happen anytime that you have vicinal hydrogens that are in different environments. The only time that the n plus run rule is going to give a perfect multiplet of a doublet, a triplet, a quartet, etc., is when the signal that you are observing is split by protons that are in exactly the same chemical environments, meaning that they will have exactly the same splitting frequencies and give a very nice clean multiplet. Otherwise, in this common scenario that we're seeing here on the screen now, for situations where you have complex molecules with multiple vicinal hydrogens in a variety of different environments giving a variety of different splitting signals, frequencies, 
what we're going to see is complex splitting patterns occur. So let's now do an example problem of applying this type of information. So in this problem, what we're going to do is draw a splitting tree to show the expected splitting pattern for the hydrogen that we have circled based on the coupling frequencies that are listed. So what we're saying here is that we anticipate that this proton circled in red here that shows up at 5.7 ppm on the x-axis is coupled with the protons here with the coupling constant of 6 hertz and coupled with this proton over here with a coupling constant of 15 hertz. That's the frequency at which we expect the splitting to occur. That's the width of the split, the width of that um, doublet, triplet, quartet, whatever pattern that we're seeing. So we can start our splitting tree here at the top, expecting that we have a delta value of 5.7. That is where our proton chemical shift is going to show up along our x-axis if we are looking at the proton in red here. Now that proton in red is going to be split by protons in two different environments. So as visinal protons here at the CH3 group and a visinal proton over here. And so what's going to happen is initially that signal for the proton at 5.7 is going to be split into a doublet because of the fact that we have this proton over here that's giving a large frequency 15 versus six. And this is one proton, so it's anticipated to split the signal into a doublet. And so that doublet would be spaced at 15 hertz along the x-axis of our spectrum. Then from there, now that we have taken care of that 15 hertz splitting right here, then we look at the other, which is our methyl group over here, which gives a splitting of six hertz. And we expect that a methyl group, since those three hydrogens are all equivalent to one another, they're all symmetrical and interchangeable with one another, we expect for that to split the signal into a quartet because applying the n plus one rule to a methyl group, n equals three plus one gives four, meaning a quartet. And so each of those signals of our initial doublet that we created by splitting the signal into two with a frequency of 15 hertz here, now is going to be split further, each of those into a quartet. And so what I can show is that we come on down and we split into a quartet and the frequency of each of those signals in the quartet needs to be about six Hertz. And so our distance in each of these cases we need to be six hertz all the way across, even though my drawing isn't quite perfect there. They should all be evenly spaced. And then we come over here, and this signal was also split into a quartet by those three methyl group hydrogens. And so that's going to give this signal here with six hertz splitting all the way across. So what we've done here is we've taken our signal at 5.7 ppms, representing that red proton, we recognize that there's two different types of vicinal hydrogens here. There's the vicinal hydrogen over here that's directly bonded to the alkene group, and that is going to give a coupling constant of 15 hertz, meaning the spacing between the two signals is 15 hertz. And over here, our methyl group is also coupled. Our methyl group gives a coupling constant of six hertz. And so what we do is we take that 5.7 ppm signal and we build this tree where we split it into a doublet separated by 15 hertz because this proton over here would create a doublet because N plus one vicinal hydrogen equals two. And then we take these three hydrogens here and knowing that three hydrogens give a quartet because those three are equivalent, we take that doubled signal and we split it each of those 
into four parts to give our grand total here. And so what we would end up with as the signal for this is we would expect this to be a doublet of triplets or a doublet of quartets rather because there's four signals there at the bottom of our chart. So in this phrase, doublet of quartets, what we're referring to here, when we say doublet, that's the first splitting that occurs, the higher frequency splitting, as we saw at 15 hertz, and then quartets would be our second splitting. So it is a doublet because we have two quartets. So a doublet of quartets is what we could refer to this as. And if we were looking at this being drawn out onto our NMR spectrum, what we would see if we drew along the x-axis here, x-axis is ppms, that if we looked at 5.7 ppms, what we would see show up as a sig signal there is we would have a quartet and another quartet that are there side by side, giving us this so-called doublet of quartets because there are two quartets there that are spaced together, giving us our, our characteristic signal splitting for this type of scenario. So you should be able to build these types of trees and predict the NMR splitting pattern for a variety of scenarios where you have a proton that is split by hydrogens that are in two different environments. If we had a situation where we had visinal hydrogens in three different environments, then we get into much more complex splitting patterns that are kind of beyond the scope of this class because you would end up having not just two generations of your tree here, but you actually have a third generation of the tree going on, or maybe even more depending upon the complexity of the molecule to make very, very complex splitting patterns. So we will limit our consideration of this to these types of splitting patterns where you have uh, protons that are causing the splitting in two different environments at two different splitting frequencies to give these complex splitting patterns. You should be comfortable with taking molecules such as the one we did in this example and writing out these splitting pattern trees or predicting the overall multiplicity of those types of signals. And this will be very useful as well when we are evaluating the structures of unknowns and determining the structures of unknowns based on the NMR data that we have.